That's why we have to use a speculum to see the cervix. When we do that pap smear, that little duckbill looking metal plastic speculum goes in and opens up this tube so that we can see the cervix right here. Notice how the uterus flexes over top of the urinary bladder. Here, ladies, is the urethra, the area from which the urine flows. This is the vagina. Oh. Two separate holes. Yes. You do not pee out of your vagina. <laughs> it's sad that I have to tell people this. Oh, I don't know. Adult women who've had children. I had to explain to them that urine does not come out of the vagina. The urine comes from here. Amen. That's why if you pee right after intercourse, you think, oh, well, am I going to wash all that sperm up? No. No, that's in here. The urine's coming out of here. Vagina. Uterus. The uterus is only about three inches long in a nulliparous woman, a woman who's never been pregnant. That uterus is going to stretch to hold a baby. <clears throat> it's going to grow and grow and grow because it's stretching and stretching and stretching, which means those muscular walls are going to get thinner and thinner. And that is going to squeeze that baby out through here, through the baby, down through here, and out of the body. So, let's look at the female reproductive system. Let's look at the reproductive system. Oh, you know what? Let's start with that side. And you can't see it sometimes, right? You can't see the uh, urethral me medius? Yes. Yeah, Meatus. Correct. So that's why they probably think that it comes out this big hole that we actually can't see. Correct. So. Because yeah. look, look, look at the location. Yeah, you can't see. Here's the clitoral though. Here's the clitoris. Here's the urethral meatus. Here's the vagina. Or at least the vaginal introitus. The labia majora are the thicker outer lips. The major, uh, the more, sorry. The labia majora are the thicker outer lips. The clitoris is right here where the subsequently dedicates the clitoral part for the prepuce or skin. Opening to the urethra where the urethra out is here, vagina is here, anus is here. This is the perineum. Just like in the male, we said the perineum was the area between the scrotum and the anus. Here is the perineum of the female. There are two ovaries. These are the gonads. And the floating tube is suspended over near the ovaries. So what happens is the ovaries make estrogen, estradiol, estrogen, and progesterone. And the ovaries contain follicles. And those follicles contain eggs. When she is born, a woman, female baby, has about 25,000 immature eggs. I mean, before she's born, she has hundreds of thousands. But by the time she's born, she has about 25,000 immature eggs. Each follicle contains these eggs. And over her lifetime, she will release four to 500 of those eggs. So, this is an ovary, and we have that she has these follicles, and each one of these, once a month, each one has an egg, about once a month, 
about five of those eggs will start to mature, and one will mature completely. And that follicle will rupture. Break apart. And where's that egg going to go? Fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. Has these little finger like projections called fimbriae. They're going to help rupture that follicle and direct that egg to move this way into the fallopian tube. Is that an electrical signal? I'm sorry? Is that an electrical signal? Or is this no, like a regular this is mechanical. Uh -huh. Mechanically, where you help it break it apart mm -hmm. and then direct it that way. Wait, so you're making it look like it passes like through the, the ovary membrane to the, the follicular thing. membrane breaks open. Oh. Yeah, but... So this is more on the outside. I mean, it, from the it, ovary. Think of it this way. Think of it, think of it this way, okay? It's coming out. In three dimensions. Think of it that way. Oh, that's so how it looks. This is like the surface, right? That's the surface of the ovary? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that just ruptures right there. So then it floats from the ovary to the fallopian tube? Yeah. With these little fimbriae doing this. I actually see. Just like I just the airliners. Know I, don't, I, like, I don't know how that's done. See? The ovary is not connected with the I need like a, I need like a pad with an ovary and stuff so that I can see. Yeah, it's I can't I've seen it. Like I've seen it done like as far as like a CT not a CT scan, but like an ultrasound. Ultrasound scan. So like it's it's not that big. They're not that big. Like um the uh the eggs or the ovaries, ovaries. the ovaries, they're not that big. Like when you get say That's you get like a noodle ring, yeah, exactly. Say if you get like a noodle ring or something like that. They check your ovaries and the size and the the, the width. And I'm stuff just confused. Like. This the, the gap in between the two. How the egg still goes there instead of getting lost somewhere. Is this so do this. Come here. Egg. I'm just so I would be yeah, out of something. Just like I thought it was just like how jelly was attracts to your I, I have I have a big gap here because I'm drawing it for effect. No, that's what I'm saying. Like and even in that picture, it's still for effect. So it's not actually. So it's more like this. So it's actually on. But it's not like. Like this. Like, but it's more like this. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was like this whole the gap, gap is, that it had to gap travel is small. Like, but okay. Yeah, but there's still a gap. Like how the jellyfish attacks it, it's prey almost. The jellyfish don't attack prey. So it's just like a suction tube on our other you know, ovaries. It comes the beautiness of it, basically. Can you explain? You know what I'm talking about. Yes, they said like the technic the, the tentacles. The tentacles. Tentacles. The tip. Tentacles? Tent tentacles or whatever, it attracts the fish. So, you know, it's movement and it's beauty. That's what they say. Yeah, but this is not movement or beauty. This is not beauty. This is just movement. Um, the fibri are just doing this, which is going to help bust this open to release the egg and direct it so the into the first part of the fallopian tube. The first part of the fallopian tube is funnel shaped for a reason. To bring it in, yeah. More likely to get it into it. But, um, so the ovary on the outside is not a smooth sack holding the eggs. It's more of a membrane that is allowing eggs to pass through to get suctioned by the fallopian tubes. Is that not, is that a, a good understanding? No, follicles are on the ovary. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like that's so it's not. That's what I'm saying. So it's not just I'm like I'm sack holding. Yeah, but yeah, but think of it as like a very thin membrane here. Like yeah. A, almost like a think of it like a blister, right? It's still a membrane that covers skin, but it's really, really, really thin, so it's easy to break. Well, yeah. think of it th that happening here. Yeah. Where it's creating almost like that blistery, mm -hmm. to where this then is thin enough to where it can get broken. And the egg gets released. I guess I just always assumed that it was like a tube, you know, like a tube system, like 
by the, the tubes by attached to the ovaries. Yeah, it's automatic. Not, they're not actually attached. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you hear me off with that. Yeah, one. and now this egg has to make its journey from here all the way down to here, which is about five inches. It takes about five days. Okay. For the egg to make that journey. Two things are pushing it down that way. Peristolic motion, there's layers of muscle inside of that fallopian tube, and cilia. Remember, cilia, sweet. Oh, that little. The cell. That's little, around, that's the, that'd be around it. This is extending from a cell itself. The membrane extends out with the machinery that sweeps and sweeps and sweeps. So those two things help to push the egg this way, which means the sperm has to swim against the current, and these are not drawn to scale, by the way. The sperm have to swim this way against all that current, and tends to meet the egg somewhere around here, and fertilize it. What's the thing? What's the then it has to continue moving this way. Peristalsis. Peristalsis. And now this egg is actually has new cells developing here inside, it becomes what we call the blastocyst, which is going to implant in the wall of the uterus. What's the blastocyst? What is that? What's that? What is that for? That's for the sperm or that's just No, no, no. Shh. The sperm meets the egg. 23 chromosomes meets 23 chromosomes. As soon as that happens, one brand new cell is created in there. As soon as the sperm releases its chromosomes inside, a brand new cell is created inside that egg with 46 chromosomes. And then that is going to divide and become two cells with 46 chromosomes. And it's going to divide and divide and divide eventually until it gets to this. Please pay attention to this. What's peristalsis again? The contraction. Wait, what? Peristalsis is this, right? Peristalsis is that movement, oh, that right. wave like motion created by muscle. Now, this is going to implant in the endometrial tissue. No, I see it. Well, it's right there. The endometrium it explains it. Well, it shows you where it's at. I thought it was really show <laughs> You guys don't know. What you're doing. Kind of crooked one in yours. Everything you like that? Yeah, it looks like a light bulb. That's closer. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Vagina? Right. Yeah. Got it. Opening to the cervix? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cervix is the neck part. Okay. This opening right here is just a little tiny hole. Inside of here. Is an endometrial lining. So of course we're gonna have to have blood supply go to that, right? Yeah, so it's gonna have a little openness. Isn't that that it's gonna have cells, so it's gonna be oh, requiring blood. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So here's what happens every month. This gets thicker. And it gets thicker throughout the, month. throughout the month, which is increasing the amount of cells to increase the amount of tissue. If you increase the amount of tissue, you need to increase the amount of blood. If there's more tissue there, then we're going to need a whole lot more blood going there. We do this because this guy over here is going to implant... into this. It's the egg, right? Yes, what was once the egg is now full of a bunch of cells. Mm -hmm. 
And it's actually going to change its shape here quite a bit. We're going to see these little Fair Lake projections that it's going to have. And that is going to be what we call the chorion. That's the early placenta. That's going to eventually become the placenta. So it's going to embed itself in the endometrial tissue. When it does that, it's going to send out a signal, a chemical, that says, we need blood. We need blood because we are making baby. <laughs> baby in So you said the, the... Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Because that chemical that it sends out, sends out is going into mom's blood supply. It's going into her tissue, which means going to her blood. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That chemical is called beta-HCG, or human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. This is what the stick looks for when she pees on it. If she pees on the stick and this is present, that means it's been released from this, which means it's now in mom's blood, which means it's now going to get filtered out by mom's kidneys into her urine, She's going to pee on a stick, and the stick's going to say, yep, this is in she her blood, it. which means she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, that what is your uh, Beta HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. Oh, beta HCG. Um, I kind of forget my exact question, but just basically on the um, creation of the placenta. Yes. You're saying it's the part on the other side of the red line? Kind of All the finger-like little projection parts That's, can okay. become the placenta. Okay. okay. And I kind of simplified it here because it's actually burrowing in. Yeah. But I've kind of simplified it, but that's kind of what's happening. Okay. And then where where does the placenta sit during pregnancy? It is going to a bed in here. So it's going to be in the walls of the uterus? Yeah, in the endometrial wall. Okay. And as this stretches, it's going to be moving because if it's here, but as the uterus stretches because it's getting bigger, it's going to end up more here, more here, more here, more here, more here, more here, more there, depending upon where it starts out. And then Hopefully, because we don't want it down here. That could get in the way. Gotcha. But, yeah, it's going to embed, it's going to be embedded into the endometrium. And at what what makes it come loose, I guess, during childbirth? Like what makes it, what makes it come out of the wall to be released and taken as afterbirth? Um, I can't, well, those, these are different, these are all different things. Oh. Um, understand that the menstrual cycle, which is a cycle continuous like this, right? Mm -hmm. This is happening all the time. Right now it's happening. When people say, oh, I'm not on my menstrual right now. Yeah, you kind of are. You're on the cycle because it's a cycle. You only see a small portion of that cycle, right? The thing that happens during this cycle, the change that takes place are all directed by two main hormones. Two, well, two main hormones we'll start with. Estrogen and progesterone. And the estrogen is released at the certain levels and the progesterone spikes up and drops off. If she's pregnant, what we don't want to happen is we don't want that change in those hormones. We want it just to remain steady. So what happens is this HCG acts just like estrogen, where it comes out and it just comes out in this kind of steady state like this, and then it peaks off, and then it stays like that. The reason that happens is because we want to stop this cycle. We want to freeze it because we don't want it to go through that menstrual phase. We don't want the ischemia that comes with that and then to the menstrual phase, else the baby wouldn't survive. Well, we still do that slow. No, no. So the body freezes the menstrual cycle, and that's because this mimics the way estrogen comes out and then just, and then just stays just like this. It doesn't change its peaks or anything. But it still replaces. It is, yeah, yes. Yeah, and then the placenta gets big enough 
to where it makes estrogen, which then just keeps everything at that same evenness so that the cycle doesn't continue. Once that gets stopped, once it stops making that estrogen, then these changes are going to start to happen where it's going to start to release. And that's going to happen after the baby is delivered. It's going to start that release. Once the release, the um, once it's released, then um, the normal what is it called? Acidity. Does the balance start happening again? Yes. Yeah, that's e eventually, okay. yes. But again, if you go back to the endocrine system, remember hormones act in chain reactions where mm -hmm. one causes another, which causes another. Well, of course, estrogen and progesterone don't work alone. They have to have other hormones that trigger them to do their thing. And then we have negative feedback mechanisms that send messages back, et cetera, et cetera. What? So if she continues to breastfeed, as a for instance, what that does is that sort of keeps that Gives cycle the, freezing again. For the estrogen to come back. No, stops it. Keeps keeps it like regular at a regular rate. In other words, it acts as a natural birth control uh, if she breastfeeds. Oh, uh, okay. Theoretically, don't go out and say, well, Dr. Sturgeon said uh, it's, it's um, birth control, so I don't have to worry about it while breastfeeding. It's supposed to work like that. But it doesn't always, so it's not a hundred percent guarantee. So don't use that as a only form of birth control. Now this is kind of important. You got to pay attention to this, ladies. This is what is happening every month because the body is expecting this to happen every month. Every month the body is preparing for this. It releases an egg in preparation of it getting fertilized, in preparation of it implanting in this. When the time comes and goes, where the egg is released, and, and it doesn't get fertilized, it just comes right through. So now the body says, well, we didn't have a pregnancy, so let's scrap the whole project. Release all that extra cells. Mm -hmm. No. Stop the blood supply. It cuts off the blood. Remember, we added all that extra blood supply here. Yes. It cuts it back to the minimum amount again. Well, if you cut away blood supply, what's going to happen to those tissues? Die. They're going to die. And it has to be released. And it has to be released. Which means this tissue here, 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 this tissue here. Any blood that's Cotton there is going to get stuck in there, which means what's going to happen when blood stops moving? It clots, and then all of this eventually is going to get lost until she is back down to the minimal endometrial lining. That's what I was thinking too. Where the whole thing starts again. So. Is the um, the dead stuff being released part of the the woman's like you know what I'm saying? Us I don't know what. You mean. Wait, what? Is, what? I have not explained it. Okay. Um, so you said we go back to our regular the blood flow. The minimal amount. The yes. minimal amount of blood flow. And the minimal amount of endometrium tissue. Endometrial so tissue. So before that minimal amount happened, I can't. I can't really explain it. The body cuts off the blood supply. Yeah, you said Ischemia. the body cuts off the blood supply. So instead of having all this blood, mm -hmm. cuts it down to this. So what causes the blood to then be released into our, uh, as far as the, 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 the whole Gravity. period? It just, it just moves out. But that, out is, all but that is what that is. Yeah. All right, all right. That's yeah. So is it um, normal when you hear about the body with a piece of I'm a boy. Well, when the females and cancer don't have clotting, yeah, of course. So it's fine. It is of course. Nah, because I thought that blood was supposed to just flow, like it's supposed to just. What does blood? What does blood do when it stops moving? It's thick. It's thick. How does it get thick? Clots. Clots. Yeah. That's why it gets clots because everything's clumping together. Clots yeah. Together. What? So, so, be, what like 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 so blood, like blood is, but like blood is in that tissue. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, if, okay. sh if blood moves in that tissue and then doesn't move back out again, it's not no longer moving. So it's going to clot. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, there's going to be clotting. 
Is there such thing as too much clotting? Yeah. There's always a possibility of too much clotting. Because if the person is clotting too much, they can be clotting too much everywhere else in their body. Mm. But that's usually not a case. That's usually not something that's found in there. It's found in other parts of the body. They're more prone to getting blood clots forming in other places, which is why we put them on uh, anticoagulants. I would say. This is also why if she was on aspirin or aspirin a day therapy, there would be less clotting that would happen. I had went to the doctor because I've seen a clot and I wasn't used to seeing it. Used to just be like a flat flow of blood. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a clot. It's a clot. I told the doctor, she said, oh, it's fine, it happened. And I just start seeing clotting again. And then you thought the doctor's lying to you. Because I was like, I've never seen clotting. Why is it clotting now? That's why I feel it was like weird. Like, I went on. I, well, I, under, I understand. I understand. When things start getting different, that's a reason for concern. I get that. That's why. But in this case, no, it's perfectly okay. Yeah, that's why I thought it was like. Mm. No, I, I get that. You're right. You're absolutely right that it was it was this and this and this and then suddenly it was different. Should I be worried? Mm -hmm. You should always. You should always recognize when things change. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that might not be normal. But in this case, it is. It's fine. Yeah. You're all right. You're okay. You're gonna make it. <laughs> so. This is why, and I and need you to listen to this, because people are going to lie to you. This is why women say, some women that you know, have said that they had their period through their entire pregnancy. Well, they can't. If they had their period, that means it went through the ischemic phase, which meant it cut off the blood supply and reduced this to the minimum amount of tissue every single time. So that can't happen. Can there be bleeding? Of course there can. It's usually from the cervix here. But of course there can be bleeding, but that's not that's not period. Is blood. that just rupturing of the capillaries? Like what would that be that the cervix would bleed a little? It could be, yeah. But it's not period blood. Women just think anytime blood's there, it must be period blood. No, it's just different type of bleeding. But it's not from her period. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is also why. Your grandmother told you that this was a body's way of getting rid of waste and garbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know she did. It's like I was sitting there with her. But I was not. Oh, it's just flushing out your insides, baby. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, flushing out your insides, baby. Mm -hmm. So, here's the thing. Here's where the question comes. What about if when a woman is on some sort of birth control medication that causes her to only have like one or two periods a year? People say, wasn't that bad? Because I isn't that gonna build up all this? No, it's not bad because it freezes the process. So there's nothing else getting built up. So there's nothing else to get rid of. Oh, okay. It just freezes it. Because remember I said it gets thicker and thicker and thicker throughout the, the month? Mm -hmm. Well, it just freezes that process. So, so there's nothing to build up, so there's nothing to get rid of. Oh, okay. Does that make some yeah. sense? Yeah. No, it does. That's how I was just curious. Don't get it. Don't. You said don't get it? No, don't be afraid. Oh, I agree with And then I don't come off one of the things. I think my body's going to be supposed to do this, and I was changing this mind. Like, for years. But, but. If we alter hormones, doesn't that come with big side effects? Yeah. Remember I said that hormones are chemical messes that we put into our blood because of the cells, but it creates bigger effects and they last longer? Absolutely. So we know that hormones work in that chain reaction. So if we're stopping something in one place, we know something two else. other places are going to get affected by it somehow, and they're going to be bigger, longer lasting side effects. We know this. And you know this. They can come in the form of everything from... Um, weight gain, to hair loss, to acne, mm -hmm. and mood changes. Mm -hmm. Because again, these hormones also affect the, the neurotransmitters signals. that are up here. Yeah, exactly. So we can, see, we can see those, we can expect those. The idea is, well, the side effects are short term, they're not always yeah, severe. How much, yeah. Babies last forever, is and they are severe. Expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at us. That's how we started out. Look how expensive we are. Yeah, that's true. I know. Ask my mom. All right. You want to put a medical 
Yeah, the job. That's where they sold me. I should have done that. All right. Um, any questions about this? Um, I feel like I did somewhere along the line. I had a question, but it's more about the birth control, so I guess I have to wait. Okay. Um, every month, about five of those eggs are going to come to maturity, but only one's actually going to get ruptured out of the follicle and leave. What happens if two eggs? Fraternal twins. Fraternal twins. <clears throat> That's not what's supposed to happen. Only one is supposed to be released. This is mom's body making a mistake to get released. What happens if the sperm meets the egg here and the egg starts to fertilize and grow mean? here? Well, that's an ectopic pregnancy. That's an ectopic pregnancy. Is it going to grow to a complete baby here? No. Why not? Not enough room. Not enough room, not enough nutrients. This here is the area designed for baby growth. That's designed to send more blood supply. It's designed to stretch. This is not. What if it gets fertilized and stuff right here? Oh, definitely. The fallopian tube. Ectopic pregnancy. It's still an ectopic pregnancy. This is what people call tubal pregnancy, but it's still ectopic. Again, because this room, there's not enough room, there's not enough blood supply. It's not supposed to grow there. Now, a couple of years ago, if you'd asked me, well, what if they caught it here? Could they transfer it here? I would have said no a couple of years ago. Now, however, they do have some technology where if they catch it at the right time, they could actually attempt to do that. And I've, I've read about some success, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. I don't think I would want to. But I would be, I would be careful. I would be carefully optimistic about doing a procedure like that because you're really still hoping for a lot of things. I would say you're more likely to have a miscarriage or a, we'd say a spontaneous abortion, but you guys would say a miscarriage, right? Or like birth defects, right? That's what I was thinking. We're like the Possibly. Right maybe, it's not, maybe it doesn't get all the blood supply you're thinking. Possibly. Maybe it didn't get the blood supply it needed early on and now it's already developed some of those things and now it's too late. Possibly. Yeah. So, yeah, I would. I would be. Yeah, I would be really careful about um, suggesting that type of procedure. But it is something that's, that's actually can be done now, which is amazing. It is. Okay, what else here? HCG. We know that now. Human chorionic and adrenaline hormone. What if it comes back that she peed on the stick and it said positive for this? Does that mean she's pregnant? <clears throat> Listen to me. 99.8% of the times, it means she's pregnant. 0.2% of the time, it's bad news. Well, what is that? Um, it could be something like what we call a molar pregnancy that had implanted there. It's not, a, it's not a good thing. It's not a developing fetus. It's like a tumor. Um, a tumor, a tumor Stemming from an egg okay. that was not fertilized okay. or, or fertilized incorrectly or something. But it's not good news, it's bad news. So 99.8% of the time or approximately, if it says she's pregnant, she's pregnant. If it says she's not pregnant, does that mean she's not pregnant? No. No. Because remember I said HCG sort of comes up like this and then peaks and then plateaus for a while before it drops off and is replaced by estrogen. So if she takes that too early, there might not be enough of this to show up on the test. So it doesn't mean she's not pregnant. Or she's pregnant in here, and there's just not enough HCG getting into the blood to show up that I'm she's pregnant. Say, I, thought, I thought you could still, still uh, see that you were pregnant. Through yes, birth. but it's usually later, mm -hmm. and it's with less amount of HCG. Gotcha. So what would normally, like like if she knew she was ovulating on Tuesday, and she and her husband decided, okay, that's the day we're definitely going to be doing this, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then um, 10 days later she takes a pregnancy test, and it comes back negative. But two days after that, she takes another pregnancy test and it comes out positive. Well, it probably should have shown up before that. It probably should have shown up that 10 days afterwards. 
but it didn't. Why is that? Because there just wasn't enough HCGB created and released into the blood. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. What else? Um, the uterus is made up of muscle. Myometrium makes up most of the uterus. Uterus, 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 myometrium. Myo. Myo, muscle. Metrium. Endometrium is the thin lining. The muscle, muscular part of the uterus is what's going to squeeze that baby out later on. That whole, that whole thing is going to squeeze like this and squeeze that baby out through here, which is going to open up quite a bit. What do we call that when that opens up? What do they say is happening? Dilation. That's dilation of the cervix. That little hole is going to become much, much bigger. An effacement is thinning of this right here. This part of the cervix becomes thinner. Because it's stretching. And that's also going to cause that dilation. So we see effacement of the uterus and we see dilation of the uterus. Effacement is more inside. The face, effacement is the thinning of those effacement. walls. Um, and this is going to go from 0 centimeters to 10 centimeters. That's pretty big. 10 centimeters like that. And then a baby's going to come through there. Okay. Uh, the uterus has its own ligament that attaches it. The fallopian tubes have their own ligaments. The ovaries have their own ligaments. But then all of it is attached with what's called the broad ligament. It kind of looks like a bat wing. And this is helpful because if I'm doing a bimanual exam and I push the cervix upwards, the uterus is going to get pushed upwards, like towards the surface, and that's going to bring everything else up with it. Does that make mm. sense? Mm. So then I can feel with my other hand it don't any abnormalities or look for tenderness. It's not necessarily like like completely moving it back. It's just like moving the stuff like, like this. Like towards not the like surface. Because like remember, this. the uterus is tilted this way over the urinary bladder. So all I'm doing is I'm taking it and pushing it this way. So more towards the surface. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, questions about this? No questions about the menstrual cycle? No. Pregnancy, delivery. Okay, how long is a normal pregnancy? 38 to 42 weeks. Yep. Basically, which makes the average 40. That's how they come up with that number. But look at that. There's a four-week span there. So when a woman says, my baby was three days late. So? Three days late from what? An estimated delivery date. It's just a guess. It's just a guess based on approximates. The first thing we come up with is... I guess based on the last day of her menstrual cycle. first last no the first day of her last menstrual period, and then uh, we know she didn't get pregnant on that day. We know it was about two weeks after that. So we do a little math called my geo rule, and then we end up with an estimated delivery date. And then later on, we do an ultrasound and look at the bioidentical diameter. Or we look at the crown to rump length. Or we look at the length of the femur. And all we do is we compare that to a chart that says uh, the length of the femur, uh, that length of that femur is about the same as this baby who's 13 weeks pregnant, 13 weeks developed. Well, we thought it was 14 weeks based on our math. So maybe it is only 13 weeks. Or maybe it's 16 weeks. We thought it was 14 weeks. So now we change the due date based on those things. But again, it's just an estimate because some babies are going to be bigger, some are going to be smaller because we're humans. We're different sizes. Some of us are perfect sizes. 
perfect, with perfect hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect sense of humor. Perfectly charmed. Because I had to get him dinner. Why? What did you do? He would knock him out. No, do not blame the baby. Remember the baby. I had a lot. See, the thing the was, the baby I, has nothing to I do with this. I had enough fluid. I had enough. Every, I had enough fluid to last a, 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 a whole another week, but they don't like, allow the babies to stay in that long. My due date was originally supposed to be September the first. He came up September. Well, he was forced out. Well, he had to come up September the twelfth. That's a, that's that that's is a the, long that time. Is yes, the, that yeah, is you're the pushing. Time. You're pushing. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because of the but, fluid but that I had. why did you do that? I, why did I, what, get induced? Why didn't your uterus push the baby out when it was supposed to? What, I, why did I have to have a C-section? I don't know. Are why you they, your baby, you should have pushed the baby out sooner. Yeah, but I wasn't dilating at but all. But you should have. Why not? I don't know. Were you not concentrating? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I wanted to come out. But How do you concentrate on your cervix dilating? He, oh, you saying like that? Oh, no, but I don't, I just, he, I wasn't dominating at all. Yeah, please don't blame the baby. Baby has nothing to do with the delivery at all. No, I'm not blaming him. You did, you just said. Other than whether or not the baby's out. ready? <laughs> yeah, it's never the baby's fault. It's the mom's fault. But what 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 caused me to not dilate? Like, I have no idea. what would cause somebody to not dilate? No idea. Especially if they're still going through the active phase as far as contraction and all of that. You know, the baby is fine or whatever, the heartbeat is normal and stuff. Yeah. But it's like no dilation going on at all. Exactly. Like, I was it's only at like two or three. And that's it. I'm and I was there from eight in the morning till August. Well, I was there from September the 11th to when he came out, which was like 12 o'clock. Um, September the 12th. Yeah. I never seen no. Nothing was going on. Nothing but contractions. They try to dilate you, service store, or anything like that. They put anything inside of the dilate. Yeah. Well, they, they don't. don't. They, 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 they did, uh, they the one who busted my, um, my mucus plug. But other than that, it just grows and grows and grows. What happens to everything in here? It all shrinks up towards the diaphragm, right? Yeah, it gets, it gets pushed up to the side, some down a little bit. Everything gets pushed around. And there's something in particular that gets pushed upwards. The intestine. The stomach. Oh, right. The stomach gets pushed upwards. So it's That's getting squeezed like this. This right here is the lower esophageal sphincter, that muscular doorway. This is getting squeezed like this, so it's causing that doorway to open up, which is oh, causing well, stomach acid, acid to go from the blood. stomach up into the esophagus, gotcha. which causes acid. heartburn. Heart it has nothing to do with the baby having hair. Oh, no. <laughs> Babies are covered with hair. Oh my God. Before they're period, born. Period. They say period. Um, so high. What are you doing? That doesn't go up there. So, so that's why she has hard for it. Are you passing it to the side of the leaf? Oh my God. Where are we going? I thought we had like a half hour left. No, um, no, no, no. Wow. You were teaching. learning. I was teaching. I teach my butt off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tried to teach Doug, but I did a really great job. Good job. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, woo. All right. Um, so this was the last day of medical terminology.